We are live. Here we go. Daniel Francisco here from Blue Star Union. Today we're in Heightstown, New Jersey, live from the New Jersey Libertarian Party's uh, annual convention. We have a, a bunch of uh, measures getting voted on right now. Uh, been going on for a couple of hours. Very shortly, we're going to have the honor of getting to see two big names uh, in the movement and in the sort of comedy world. We got comedian and political commentator Dave Smith, and we also have author Scott Horton. We got to meet Scott last night here in the hall for the social hour that they had on uh, Friday evening. What a guy, man. In incredibly intelligent. Just someone that I think is going to be a real treat uh, to listen to uh, for the crowd here. So we're really looking forward to hearing both of these guests. We're big fans of Dave Smith as a comic and as a commentator. So I'm like a kid in the candy store today. This is going to be awesome. Uh, as always, we want to thank our friends and sponsors, Lauren Zotti Coffee. They're the ones that help make all of this possible. Uh, helping sponsor a bunch of podcasts in our network, Friends of Liberty, Friends of Individual Rights and Free Speech. If you go to laurenzotti.coffee, which you can see here scrolling on the bottom of the screen and put in code BLUESTAR, you get 10% off your entire order. So we have a little uh, little cockpit here. It's a little tight quarters. <laughs> it's a little warm, but we, we got a lot of great uh, characters that are going to be cycling in and out. But we're going to start with a nice core group. So behind me, you know who it is, the man, the myth, the legend, the shitster, Matt Strzok from Why Libertarian. He's also also simulcasting on his channel. If you go to YouTube and search Why Libertarian, great guy. What's up, Matt? Uh, if you want to see uh, the actual angle that I'm usually looking at Dan from, check out my live cast. It's right be up behind him. So <laughs> we'll, take, we'll, we'll take turns uh, looking his way. Uh, but this is just, uh, unfortunately, the circumstances we had to work with, given the, the the room that we're in. And then some of you that that follow us and watch a lot of our uh, our parties, and one of our first guests ever on Blue Star Union, Cannabis Kirk, right here, my my man. What's up, Cannabis? Man, congratulations, man. Congratulations. I'm here to talk the same talk that I always talk. Appreciate it, man. So, I like I said, I we did a radio interview on NJ1015, and Kirk was one of the first guys that reached out to us. So he has a special place in my heart. He's a friend of the union, been to a bunch of our events. Great dude. Um, but unfortunately, the he had a lot of high aspirations at the at the beginning of the of last year when we first met him, and uh, the government's not really treating your business too well, is it, Kirk? No, <laughs> they pretty much shut it. It's pretty much what business at this point is just just me myself right now. Um, yeah, why don't you give a little? Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of new, not a, a lot of new listeners, right? We are there. Are, our demographics, our followers, look a little different than they did like eight eight months ago. Why don't you just give a little background on what you do for a living and what your business is all about? Okay. Um, well, I had a business. Long story short, it was a smoke shop, and I decided to also get in the cannabis industry. Also, so I was learning because you know things family wise things happened to me and my family through the whole laws and the prohibition and everything like that. But I had an online business and um, it pretty much got shut down, which since I also deal with both industries, which is the vaping industry and the cannabis industry, that affects me double weight. So right. that's pretty much. So when did you start this business? I started this business in about 2000, 2014, I believe. Wow. Start, I started in 2014. So you've been at it for a while. And then these these roadblocks really only started this year because you, you were doing really well. I know you had a lot of a lot of business buzzing. You were like running around doing deliveries like you had a lot of demand in the summertime. Correct. Correct. So they put this law in. It started in 1949. It was something called the Jenkins Act. And then in 2009, it went and they had um, had changed it up. So it went from the Jenkins Act to the PAC Act in 2009. And with that rewording, they made it now illegal for you to transport um, like cigarettes and things like that. It's like to control can but not uh, control cigarette um, tax. So with that, you can't sell online at all. You know, so that, that's pretty much what it was. And then in 2020, that's when it was officially banned. So it went from. A little thing, but they took cigars off. And what people don't understand is, is that in this industry I'm in, the whole smoking and vaping and cannabis thing, which we get into longer, but it's three umbrellas. You got the cigarette, big tobacco companies. Then you got the cigar companies. And then you got cannabis, vape, hookah, anything like that. So, 
Yeah, and often the uh, they they're they're mutual, right? So the, oftentimes the cigar companies are part of conglomerates that also deal with tobacco and cigarettes. I think we talked a little bit when they, you were. They on. typically also have the same sourcing mechanism too, right? So yes. like a lot of the suppliers end up ganging up on it too. Yeah, and a lot of the product is is cross pollinated as well. Oh, this product didn't meet the standard for this type of uh, smoking product. Let's dump it into this less quality you know, yeah. type smoking product. Yeah. Um, so we, we talked a little bit about the industry. I remember last time where, uh, from my experience, I worked for a tobacco company where mm -hmm. you know, big government and these big corporations often conspire with each other oh, yeah. to regulate the industry in order to beat out the small guys. Um, so what what is there some sort of adjacency? Is there something else you can do in the space? Or is this legislation going to just absolutely crush you? Well, we talk about the vaping side. Yes. So the vaping side is it's pretty much because they, they come up with excuses all the time. First, they said it was banking. So we had to find ways to get banking. And then it was um, the merchants that wanted to deal with us. And it was like that. But basically, how this law came to, um, some, like, you could, like, for instance, right, I had a, 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 lady, a lady ordered on my website because it was an online website. Right now, they told us to put age 21. I put age, you know, I put that on there. So, you know, you got to click on 21. And they use a credit card. Okay, that's fine. So one of my drivers go and deliver it to him, to, to the person, to the lady. The lady was about 18 years old, probably. You know, at that age, everybody looks really young. So I told him, don't deliver it. I said, because I don't know. We'll just refund the money. It ain't worth the risk. Mm. I, call it F, I call it FDA, I believe. And I said, now, if my driver would have delivered that, was that legal? Because she had to click on, there's no way we could see what people look like right. online. And she said, no, it was fine. It was fine. Then two weeks later, then they said vaping is banned because you could sell to minors and things like that. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know if it was a coincidence. I don't know if I was the reason, but. We just want to let you have your last fun for, for yeah. two weeks. Yeah. And, and also, real quick about the vaping side is that now since they got this law that you can't sell no kind of inhaling far as. Um, a device or something you could ingest in you you can't sell it online no more so yes it's hurting the vaping side but people don't know what's coming to the cannabis side because like i said i'm the number one supplier when it comes to uh thc devices no one has more variety than me people may have more but different kinds no one had more than me so that you done shut down the whole cannabis side because you can't vape that with those devices so is a mess right now. Yeah, how, how does the new law figure in uh you know non-smoking uh products so like the, the edibles and all that. Do you, are you familiar with how the law is treating those? Yeah. It's anything you ingest. So lotion, you could sell online. A gummy, things like that. But who knows? You could probably can't even sell a grinder, to be honest, because he's talking about anything that makes you inhale or you inhale it. Well, how do they know the, the content, though? So, like, you know how the new the new New Jersey law is, like, you can carry, you can possess, like, six ounces. Yeah. So how can I have, like, a tray of brownies? You know, like, that's obviously more than six ounces, but... And yeah. how are they going to weigh it? Yeah, right? yeah. Like, how, is it six do they weigh the chocolate? Yeah. Or like, yeah. Well, well no, nah, the thing is, it's all, you cannot sell it online at all. And it's crazy because with cigars, cigars supposed to be with the tobacco companies, right? But you can sell cigars online. So you're going to see a lot of a whole lot of online cigar sales than you can with um, the vaping. And that, that's killing because how, they, how the government looks at it is that cigars don't target kids. But then you'd be like, okay, cigar company guy. If I go to my local Wawa, I see black and mouths and wine flavor, yeah. vanilla yeah. flavor. Yeah. That's not marketing to kids. Yeah. Sakara companies don't want to take knowledge to that. They're like, well, that's something different. And I don't know because I got 0% milligrams of nic uh, nicotine, which is pretty much just vapors, vapor smoke, nothing in there, no tobacco, no nicotine, versus my three milligrams, which is nicotine and tobacco in there. But then we all connected, though. But you guys not connected with them. So Yeah, and Black and Miles is owned by uh, Altria, which is Philip Morris. It's Marlboro Cigarettes. Yeah. It's the big player. <laughs> So like I said, the markets are small, man. Well, yeah. the, the vape industry doesn't have a lobby, right? Like, that's the biggest problem that you're running into. So, like, uh, the one place I used to go to was Good Guy, right? And Correct. Like, Good Guy's got, like, a bunch of spots now, a bunch of retail spots. And that was the one thing they would tell me every single time is, like, they're basically playing in the minors compared to, you yeah. know, w what's going on. Like, they don't even get in a bat, basically. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. So so what what is this, what is this going to do for you, man? Is there any hope that – you would get a brick and mortar store is that out of the question well it's really no choice now unless unless you're going to have a real strong team at your at your company where you can know every tax law 
it like because it's going to be a difference between the state law and a, and a town law because some towns even in new jersey you go to carter right it's three and a half percent you go to livingston and i believe it's six percent i'm not too sure yeah you're so, right so you got no different towns it, you better off not don't sell online just sell in a brick and mortar store and that's all you could do right now and right. then you know chuck schumer he's supposed to add got it where the banks because cannabis will be regulated in 2024 the dea um is getting into that right now because they got to figure out the difference with the hemp plan and things like that so if you got a store just just sell just you just get a retail storefront you can't can't do it online it's not worth it so. yeah but are, are you going to be looking to expand into that oh yeah oh yeah definitely yeah. i'm trying to take this over nice i'm, I'm trying to take it over yeah because because the thing is i'm doing it for for the for my past and for my future kids like you know what i mean so i gotta gotta keep doing gotta keep going yeah, man. I don't know, Matt. What, what's have you uh, seen anything in terms of like? Do you do you consume vape, vaping products? I, I I used to. I actually used it as a, a way to get off a of six. Yeah. So like, I was a big cigarette smoker. Um, I used it for better part of like two years, and that's actually, if you remember, like, um, who was it in the UK was the first time like a bunch of doctors came out and they basically said that it was actually a good thing because it provided an avenue for you to be able to like ratchet down the nicotine yeah. um and you know when when it came through with all the bands and everything like that mostly that stuff that came through that uh ended up with resulting in the legislation and the change in the requirements was all chinese black market bullshit that came through the system it wasn't homemade locally done stuff it was all this like mass-produced stuff that was bought on the cheap and that's what the problem was and, and that's what i said in the first interview we had about that is that that was all from vitamin E and mm. things like that. That wasn't from, you know, legit stuff. And it just, it sucks though. But, you know. And you mix it? your own liquids, right? Yeah, you can. You can. I mean, I, I didn't because it's, it's, it's easy for me to get name brand because yeah. a lot of people buy off name brand. Like, you know, some people buy, it doesn't matter, generic, but name brand sells. So. So what do you see happening in the future of this industry? What do you think it's going to look like in two years, given these new laws? I think it's going to get repealed for the simple fact that it's just like how you were saying about cigarette companies where you were mm. saying um talk about the lobby yeah the lobby yeah. yeah so as soon as we get people that could be in agreement and fighting for us the same way the cannabis industry is building up the only difference is is that since biden got biden does not like the vaping industry like i said but biden loves the cannabis industry so you know and it's so like the democrats like the cannabis part and the republicans like the vaping part you know like that so is it's tough it's tough i think you're going to see consolidation too like if if they continue if, if they continue to keep the regulations in place I, I mean like a lot of the places that are successful they went from one location to like you know five or six and they stuck with the regulations just because they had to right like yeah. but starting up probably sucks right like have you looked at space and things like that in order to like get rolling with a retail shop well see uh, not to get too much deep to what i'm trying to do but to have a smoke shop is like different as far as uh affordability than it is like a like a cannabis shop because yeah. you got to have a, a quarter million dollars in new jersey yeah to even fill out the application basically so but yeah i mean i have no choice but to get a store but i, I think it'll change yeah there's definitely going to be consolidation it's every market matures uh you know the big guys gobble up the little guys uh this happens naturally in every market it's just Dude, I, it pisses me off. You know, Matt and I had a, a nice conversation a few weeks ago about the new legislation, obviously the weed legislation, mm -hmm. where they pretended that they legalized weed. They did in a very small, small fashion. Um, what was your reaction to, to that legislation? I know when we had our party in English Town, mm -hmm. you were arguing for it. You were a big proponent. I think you said it's an incremental move and yes. the right step. But So what was your reaction to the new laws? Um it definitely did something like it definitely got the ball rolling which is all we was asking for um so right now decriminalization is still in effect but for it to get fully legalized federally that's going to take time it's going to take about 2024 and but out here in new jersey is like the they got to make the the rules how it's going to go and it's going to be all ready in february because right now they're building building up what they're going to do so right now it's a it's a, um it's a commission that's going to give out to distribute the licenses right. which could be a gift and a curse because how much you want to bet they're not going to put nobody that's in cultivation on there mm -hmm. you know no, no, nobody no farmers no that's gonna know. be their friends man. exactly there'll yep. be people that let me 
you know what I mean? They're going to have former cops and, and former <laughs> extremists. That's a yeah, anti -cannabis. You've been locking people up for uh, 20 years doing this. How about you get a license to make some yeah, money yeah, off of Exactly. And, and that's the thing. But at least it's at least right to move in now. So that's better we have our friend Francine me. over here who's going to be picking up the fourth mic and, and adding her incisive commentary. <laughs> She's all like, I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 2024 for federal legislation, I think that's a little <laughs> ambitious. You think nationally we'll be at uh, some kind of decriminalization of or unscheduling marijuana? Well, that's the thing. The DEA, the only one that can move that scheduling. And it's yes. still under Schedule 1. So once it moves, and that's what the MORE Act is. The MORE Act is basically expungements. And they're going to reschedule the drug. Right now, what's holding up is the DEA with the hemp because they don't know what to do with the hemp because the hemp and the cannabis is, look at it like this, an apple, uh, apple tree and a peach tree. It's the same tree. They just grow two different apples, but they do the same thing. They grow the same way. And that's the difference between like a Delta 8, um, a Delta 8 THC. So that's it was impressed me with your deep knowledge of the science and, and, and all of the, the back <laughs> The sort of back end stuff that goes into the business, man, and that's what it takes. It takes passion and like an expertise and knowing that stuff. But uh, yeah, man, I, I, I obviously I, I don't like the licenses. I personally don't. I wish it was just like, hey, it's it's like going to buy orange juice. Go get it wherever you want, and anybody can make it. But uh, is it is it is it an incremental good? Yeah, on a relative yeah. scale, like we move this and maybe we still have to get here somewhere. Um, but I don't know. I what? So you think you think we think the market's going to consolidate? We're happy about where we are now. Uh, how do you think we get it to a point where it's truly free, where people that are the little players on the market have a fair chance to compete with some of these hedge funds? Oh man, and that's the thing because I was even going over some of the some of the bill some of the bill that he had put out. And if you look at a pie, and I don't know if people want to get their calculator because it's not going to make sense when I give you the facts of what it is. Um, so, fifteen percent of the licenses going to go to minority businesses which that's fair right and then 50 percent going to go go to women and vets okay and then they're doing 25 cent to the msos the msos is the multi-state operators those are the ones who they got a store in this state they got a store in that state you figure out how do you how to get to do that if it's not really legal yeah because they they pretty much got people that was in um, in the political world. For instance, if you look at Planet Thirteen, they have two owners. Yeah, I think one was the mayor, one was the governor. Yep. But they're the Universal World. Like, you know, I mean, they Universal Studios when it comes to cannabis. And it's like, how did you get that? You know, I you know I can't even open up a smoke shop without getting put down. But yeah, you got marijuana businesses everywhere. Yeah. Right. And you're like, okay, all right, that's fine. So that's the part where it's 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 gonna have to change. Because if you do 15% and then you do 25% to the MSOs and then another 15% go by women and vets, it's supposed to be 100%. That's only 90%. So right. where's all the 10% going, Mr. Murphy? So do you so you you like these divisions though? You want it to be like handed to particular groups? Um I don't know. Because I'm needed because it all right, I'm gonna step away for a second. Because it is, it's kind of tough off the off the fact that you say women oh, also they have programs for the women and vets. So they got cannabis programs. So, so we got we got a bunch of Jerry rigged wires over here. So this is uh, like an op this is like a, a double dare obstacle course to get in and out of here. Sorry, man. So, Keep going. So, yeah. So they give them all these licenses and it's like, OK, so the women and vets get one. And the big corporations get one and minorities get one, right? But what about the same people they talking about? They want to do this bill for the decriminalization of black and brown people. Where's my people at? You know what I mean? Yeah. And also, is it going to get taxed? So it's taxed at 5% automatically. That's what it's going to be. And then your town get to choose if it's 2% extra. That's the most they could go. That's their cap. But then it's like, okay. And that's also goes to the programs and the expungements of your records. Yeah, it goes to like a social justice fund. Correct, correct. But I'm trying to find out what's going to happen in rural New Jersey or rural Pennsylvania, where there's no black people at at all. Where where are they? What they going to ship it back to another town? Which towns don't operate like that? Yeah, New so New Jersey. Uh, I talked about this, I think, on Matt's broadcast. New Jersey has a scheme where you know our sales and use tax is like six point six two five. A portion of that goes to the social justice fund, and then that other two percent, that other tax, uh, that additional, mm -hmm. that all goes to the social justice fund, and then they can redistribute it wherever. Yeah. So it's like they, I guess, allocate it where they think it's appropriate. Okay. So, so we'll work look, that definitely bit. has opportunity for abuse, right? Yeah, because okay. is it's 
it's not regional, right? It's like, hey, we're going to take money from everyone and do whatever we want with it. Yeah. Um, look, I'm all for getting people out of jail. I'm all for decriminalizing. I don't think they decriminalize it enough. I'm all for lim limiting interactions with, and, with police. And, and Yeah, and, and that was one more thing I wanted to say about the law also is that it's not going to be that easy to get a license even if you fall in all those categories because they, they, they got – like they left room for ambiguous – um, information to be put in place. For instance, they say that you can't do nothing untrustworthy why you got locked up for marijuana. So you could have sold to a cop not knowing right. the cop was undercover. You sold to him, you're not gonna get a license. You know what I mean? You you went, you got, you know what I mean? You went and you sold weed to your cousin and your cousin told on you and he was in the car with you know his kids. That falls back on you. You can't get a license now. Like so it's not gonna be that easy and cut and dry. Yeah, man. And look, this is going to end up being just like alcohol, right? So you have, uh, oh, we got our friend Mike Rufo stopping in. Mike, do you have to run in and out or are you chilling for a minute? I'll be out. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, we'll, uh, we're going to get a rotation of guests in here after the business end of uh, the convention is done. I think they have a lunch break uh, coming up at one o'clock. So yeah, we should. Yeah, so we're going to get uh, people walking by in and out. We're at the front desk. We we'll hope to get to grab a bunch of people as they walk in and out and uh, talk to them for a little bit. So yeah, we got about like an hour and fifteen minutes. But uh, what were we saying about the? Uh, what was? What were you just saying, man? I'm sorry. No, I was just saying that it's not going to be that easy to get a license. Okay, that's what it was. So th this is, you know, it, it's finite, right? So this is eventually going to get treated the way liquor licenses are. Liquor licenses can be from half a million to way over a million dollars each. Eventually, if these are finite, it's the same principle. You, you, no one is going to be able to open a shop in 20 years if they treat it that way. And it's just going to become a rich man's game, right? So yeah. even if you want to open a little storefront in a strip mall that's, you know, 700 square feet and very tiny, uh, you're going to need a million dollars plus whatever the cost of the property is. Yeah. Who, who has that kind of money? Only big corporations, yep. only uh, guys that pool their money together. You know, some guy that wants to like pick himself up and try to start a little bakery or a little you know restaurant that, that's just not going to happen like you're gonna have to spend big dollars to be able to play in that game yeah. and that's that's the thing i see as a problem the licensures is what makes this uh, it boxes everybody out basically yeah exactly that's exactly what it does so <laughs> so uh or we got a got some comments here hey lepke uh our, our friend mitch yep yeah. yeah for some reason man we uh we hardwired today and I brought a, a I brought a computer that has like a much faster processor. It's like Mac Mini, and maybe the hardwired Ethernet is is making the picture a little bit better. Uh, so I hope that's the reason why. Maybe I'm gonna get an adapter and start doing that at home all the time when we do our other bunker live streams. My man Jose, my uh, neighbor in English Town. I know Cannabis Kirk is hype. It passed. Oh, and, oh, and I got one more thing because yeah. um my coworker actually asked this question, so I did my research because I, I do my research. I got to be prepared. So. He's a truck driver, and he asked me um, if if he have his medical marijuana card, right? Can he get fired, and and everything like that? So I said, let me do some research, and because he was like, because I don't know, because I'm gonna, I said it may mess up your unemployment, but I don't know. So I go do some research, and I, I call around, and come to find out that you can still smoke weed on a job and not get fired. But you got to go through the process. And if you don't go through the process, you will get fired. And you can still get fired, but I'll, I'll explain how it's going to work. So this is what you do. You go to your doctor, or you can even go to your job and get the Family Medical Leave Act. Get that paperwork filled out. As long as you got your job for one full year, you give that to your doctor. If they fire you, that's unjust, unjustly. And you can sue. And then when you sue, guess who got to pay? The company got to pay. Right. And because they can't fire you if you're under a doctor's supervision. Right. So that's the way around it. That's the only way I found. It. And, and you are protected with it being legal. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, that was one of the first questions that came up that we talked about with Matt when I was on the stream with him. Is like, this is obviously going to open up Pandora's box of a bunch of legal disputes. Um, not only that, government workers, right? So like cops. Yeah. Uh, right now they don't have permission to indulge, like they can still be held liable. Yeah. And as much as we often talk about and critique police, that's not fair to them. Why yeah. should they be put on a different standard, you know, as everybody else in terms of rights? So it, there's going to be some kind of case law that settles some of this, you know, someone's going to sue it always is the case. There's some kind of excitement going on. Everybody's getting up now and hugging and <laughs> I feel like I hear my voice echoing somehow, but maybe it's just in my head. Yeah, so they got people. They got people watching online here. We're we're in Heightstown. Uh, we're here in an office space where they they have a little auditorium. Oh, they're 
they're finishing up one of these boats. So uh, yeah, hopefully they'll be walking through soon. But yeah, man, it's been a fun morning so far. Last night was a great time meeting meeting Scott Horton. Uh, <laughs> there was some indulging going on right here, <laughs> right here in the building. But it's it is it is an odd thing to like say, hey, like you can be walking around with a joint now and there's nothing anybody. Well, theoretically, there's nothing anybody can do. It's a, it's but, a, it's a good thing. But I gotta ask you, man. I gotta ask you a question. What? What's up? So we started. Well, you guys started. I, I guess I was on second or third video, and you guys was really small. Now you guys getting some real, real big time interviews. Like these people, big time in where I'm at right now. So I don't know if I'm gonna get to their level. So how do you feel about that? That y'all growing? Yeah. Look, uh, it, it's 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 slow, but that's the right way, right? We're we're trying to build a name and a brand for ourselves as a community. I think I told you, like you, you and I clicked right away on the phone. I remember we talked. You had heard me, and you, we ended up talking on the phone. We talked for like forty-five minutes, yeah, yeah. And, and we clicked because we we had like a, a, a good foundational basis on like opinions about the stuff. And look, first and foremost, we hope to be a social group, right? Like this is meant to be like a fraternity, a brotherhood, a sisterhood, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. where people get together at our events and and are able to talk to each other, right? Because online, like the argument we make is people will say like platitudes, they say political platitudes, like oh I'm this and I'm that. Nobody really knows what that means. Yeah. Everybody gets tribal. Oh, I'm left. I'm right. I'm red. I'm blue. You're black. I'm white. Whatever division you want to make up, right? Mm -hmm. But when you're like face to face with people, it's kind of hard to bullshit. And because other people are listening to you, they can refute what you're saying, right? Yeah. So you can't just like run your mouth and make up stuff and not be embarrassed, like not get embarrassed by it. So we feel like it's been tough because we started during COVID. That's why in the beginning it was really slow. But um, lately, you know, it's it, it was really just like guerrilla stuff, right? Like going out on the boardwalk and talking to people, going to events, going to rallies and meeting yeah. people, take giving out business cards. And now we're at a point where we're like starting to interview a lot of gubernatorial candidates. Um, we're having uh, bigger and bigger events. We have businesses that have come on and told us how the these lockdowns have affected them. I mean, obviously, we were here in this building last week moderating the Libertarian Party gubernatorial primary debate. That's a pretty big deal, you know someone in this room is going to be running for governor after this mm. and we we actually hope that we can grab whoever uh is nominated here today and have them debate with some other people that are running as independents uh third parties and hopefully maybe even a republican if we can snag one um i, I think this is fun right i do this because i like it but moreover i think it's culturally a good thing to get people talking get people to understand people that have different viewpoints and to realize that maybe some of the things you think are not the way they seem they are um i mean has there ever been a time when you where you met someone and you like really misconstrued them and later on you realized oh man i, I was looking at them the wrong way like has that ever happened to you yeah i mean it it it, it happens often and not, you know, yeah. like even working somewhere like, you know, you could work with somebody and they never curse. And in a minute they curse you like, whoa, <laughs> like I thought you was, I thought you was real religious. Yeah. And they be like, no, who told you that? I just don't curse up on the customers. Like, oh, OK. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it definitely happens in politics for sure. And, and that's why, like we be, like culture, culture is more important than politics. Right. If you. If you can grab culture and make people laugh, make people have a good time, and then open up about what they think, I think that's a more effective means of having a conversation. And also, if you're trying to convince someone of your point, right? Yeah. Um, look, I was never a big fan of like really dry political stuff like these. Some of these nonprofits that like get together, they write white papers on things. Oh, here's like a 20 page essay. And <laughs> then I'm going to give you a speech about, you know, yeah. my theory about this and that. And I've always liked people that I feel can make me laugh, have a good time. Uh, joke around it, it, the, the fun and the culture is what is the sugar that makes the medicine go down right makes the politics yeah. go down so it's like well, people often say like why are leftists so good at dominating culture right they 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 understand that if you want to really influence people that's the sphere you have to play in right trying to like go and convince people that like oh you should be austere with your money because that's the fiscally responsible thing okay maybe that's true it's very unsexy. It's like not a fun thing to talk about. But if you see people laughing and your your favorite band is like endorsing a candidate <laughs> and then an artist and then, you know, your TV shows are making the jokes that that's why they're more effective at, uh, at, at roping people into their philosophy. Yeah. So I don't know, man. I this my little dream is to just make this fun, make this engaging, make it social, meet interesting people. I never would have met you. Yeah. Right? If I didn't, 
I never would have done that stupid interview and you wouldn't have heard me. And look how many times we we've yeah. hung out since then. And, 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 and me and you pretty much on the same level because yeah. I'm trying to take this to I'm trying to be a national known person, like because I believe in this to something I want to do, and I keep trying to figure out. I'm trying to start something positive, being positive. And I'm not out here doing what I was doing when I was young. I'm being a businessman, got an LLC, did everything legit. I pay my taxes. And why I got to keep going through loopholes. But then I found out in business, it's not a just a clean sheet. It's always a to-do always to do list. And you're always going up and down mountains. It ain't no straight path. It's a straight path. You're going to fail. Eventually, it's going to catch up to you. Yeah, man. And that's why we, oh, what is that? Oh, it's like a metal, metal trash can. That's why we like aim to show like, look, here's how the government or the state uh, hurts or hampers people. It can be anything from business. It can be civil rights, which obviously is one of the more you know important things we engage in as an organization. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a lot of Second Amendment stuff, free speech stuff, property rights, interactions with law enforcement. All that stuff is fun. That's like our wheelhouse. But then that those that legislation like the the lockdown mandates and these regulations with drugs and regulations with other consumer products they affect people like you yeah. and they affect your family and they affect your customers um that's very important and a lot of people don't see a lot of people look at like these licenses and these liquor licenses and they just think oh that's just what we do right like you go through the process and they don't understand the ramifications of what goes on behind that right yeah. so all these people that can maybe open a fantastic like uh, bar or liquor store and they can't because well you need a million dollars to oh, buy yeah. someone else's license yeah it's, it's crazy because that's even like you can even watch these shows and these people they go and they have a business they need something done they go call some news crew they give them millions of dollars and they go and their business still shuts down after like a year not to say anybody anybody business can get shut down but what i'm saying is is that you give small businesses not even half of that you give them a portion of that million dollars, give them twenty thousand dollars, and they will make the business. It, it, it's so many people that just don't have access and can't get there, and they complain because it's like these people showboating, and they have the resources, they have the accesses, and that's how I felt with my business because it was like, you know, I like I said, when you start a business, you gotta have two people you want to go you go and beat. It's somebody that's local in your area where you know you could obtain them if you just really work hard, and it's somebody that's far out that you know. Things got to work perfectly, and you know what I mean? That's the only way you're going to meet them. And once you get past that level one, nothing, nothing should be able to stop you. Nothing. Yeah, man. Imagine like imagine like all of the great pizzerias that wouldn't exist if there was some law that said, hey, to open a pizzeria, you need 750 grand, and you can only have one per town, right? Like my mm -hmm. town's got like 20 pizzerias. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, they're, some, they're not all great, but they all exist. They all make a living. Yeah. Can you imagine if they were just like, yeah, you just you can only have one, and it's going to cost a million dollars. You 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 discourage a bunch of of good players from entering the game, yeah. and on top of that, you actually defend someone who is, who is currently holding a license their ability to make a shitty product. Yeah, because no one can get in; it's and, a barrier to entry. And, and that's what the thing we think this cannabis thing going to be because we got about twelve to fifteen dispensaries in New Jersey, but if it's only them who's controlling the market. You know what I mean? Like then everybody won't have crappy product because they don't need the they're not in competition with nobody. Right. You know, and you'd be like, yo, who's the CEO of this guy? How he become the CEO? But when you open up the licenses, it makes it easier. So what I want to say for people, do not sell your genetics to these big MSOs, multi-state operators. You sell your genetics, you're gonna be mad because I don't care what they pay you, they could pay you a hundred thousand dollars. If they willing to give you that much money, how much you think they're gonna make off that? And you just sold all your genetics. So if you're going to do anything like that when you get your license, do a licensing deal. So that way you pay, you you pretty much telling the MSOs, the big corporate guys that own these big you know cannabis places, you basically tell them, oh, I'll go in, um, I'll cultivate it at my own house, and then I'll have somebody drop it off to you, <laughs> and you give me a percentage of the sales. That way, if they ever want to screw you, guess what? You have your genetics. You go and take it to somewhere else and make sure it's in a contract because once they steal your genetics, they don't need you no more, right. even if they need to buy you out because you have no control. You lost all control. Right. Yeah, you the CEO, but you lost control. And people need to realize there's a difference between a CEO, equity, and having full control. It's three different <laughs> levels. Control is always number one. <laughs> What a we got slap slappy Joe made some funny comments here the other night. He said I couldn't get five bucks for my genetics. I think he's talking about something else. But uh, <laughs> he's a he's a funny dude. Um, what let, let's put it this way: if you were to open like a storefront, 
strip mall, you know, small space. Mm -hmm. You obviously have to have different strains. Uh, you have to have different types, you know, the products, uh, different ways of smoking the products, the products that you use to smoke the products. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of yeah, stock. Yeah. It's not something that's like, uh, hey, I sell Coca-Cola, right? And I got Coca-Cola and Diet Coca-Cola. There's a lot of stuff you got to have. So what, like, what goes into that? How much is it all distributorship? Is there any? Do any of these local guys grow their own, or is everything purchased from wholesalers at this point with the actual cannabis products? Well, there's no cultivation in the law right now, so you cannot cultivate in New Jersey. So, you know, pretty much, if if everything was open, let's let's put it like that. Then yes, you're able to cultivate because that's a separate license you're going to need. You know, they saving fifty percent of the tax money. You're going to go to that, and then you're going to have a wholesaler distributor. You know. They got a separate license. The retailer got a separate license, you know, so they trying to open it up. They just want to do it slow because they think it's going to be bigger than liquor or on the same level. And the liquor, the liquor companies and the smoking companies are shaking their hands like, yes, we about to get into until they put in the law, which I like. Yep. Should we put that law in and says, slow down. This is not for y'all. Y'all can't go in, try to take everything. Let 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 these other people get resources to it first. So which is fine because now it's fair market and. Once I get in, they're gonna they're gonna piss because I'm listen, I'm 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 saying what's going on with the law. So whatever they trying to do, I'm giving y'all free information to go and do what I say because you give out your genetics, they they they're gonna run with it. You you sell them anything and you not getting no profit, no, keep control of everything and don't just do nothing just because you scared of them. They, they, they nobody. We, we all starting at the same level basically. They just got a head start because you know they in the government or they got they got ties. So uh, you gonna you gonna join us, Nick? You are not gonna sit down in the hot seat yet? Nick will join us later. How about you? Oh, look, we're gonna. You want to do a live shot here? Become a celebrity? Definitely. Awesome. A lot of a lot of action paparazzi here at the Libertarian <laughs> Convention. So uh, Mitch threw in uh, a comment here. He's one of our big fans. Uh, good a good supporter, good friend. Uh, the license scheme is completely out of reach for the average entrepreneur. Some even say it's racist. Do you think that's a fair thing to say? Um, yes. And the reason I say that is because, like I said, you get 15% to women and vets, right? 15% to minorities. What the hell is a damn minority? That could be, you know, I mean, that could be anything. You know, it could be, it could be Indians. It could be Asians. It could be, you know, whoever. Nothing in the licensing or the law is tailored towards black men, which the decriminalization, if you use, if you listen to their words on the commercials, anytime they're talking about decriminalization and people that got locked up, it's always black and brown people. Now, when it comes to the actual license, now is the minority group. And they got the programs. The women and vets got the programs, like I said. But how come the black men don't got these programs? We just get an expungement and now we need to go work for you. No, I think I think I think what Mitch is referring to is like the very like inverse that the fact that even some of the money is going to a particular forget what the group is, mm -hmm. right? It could be women, it could be black people, men, women, mm -hmm. it could be uh, like you said, vets, it could be whatever. Uh, he's just saying the very notion that it goes to a particular group is is racist. Like like you just said, yeah. what about all the other groups? And now Slappy made a joke here saying. You know, I think I'm the 106th demo group after blind nun. So <laughs> making the joke, like, yeah. how many of these groups do you kind of close it down to? And then it, we're going to introduce this behemoth yeah, over and, here. And see, that's the thing. And that's why it's run, it's run by a commission right now, which Phil Murphy appointed his own kind of people. And he's actually, they actually trying to stop something right now because they like, okay, you done put your own people in place for the commission, which is a chance for a lot of, a lot of backhand stuff because, right. you know, you're running with, you know, those MSOs who got more money, they'd be like, you know what? Give me a couple of more things I need, you know? So that takes away from resources. So it, yeah, it's man. tough because he put his own people in. So, so uh, we got Nick Magner here, uh, our New Jersey state chair, one of our good friends, always good for a laugh, making people crack up inappropriately during very serious <laughs> business going on. I, I wish we could get you on the screen there. Maybe I'll no. pull that thing over. Are you good no, where you are? Now, Kirk, I hate to say I told you so. But back in my edits, oh yeah, you guys were arguing back about in my this. edits. We yeah. had a conversation about this, and I said the only way that I was going to vote yes if it was complete decriminalization because I knew that the licensing scheme would be fucked. Well, the thing is, <laughs> and I told you that it would be, and that will happen. Well, yeah, because you know they always got to put stuff in where they can always change everything, but it did get approved. The more act is on the table, and cannabis will be legal in 2024. They they just it's just the state laws. They got different types of laws, right? 
And imagine if they didn't have all those and it was decriminalized, how great your your business would be able to grow. And now it can't because you're waiting on licensing that you probably can't get because you're not an elite with a lot of money. And that is the issue that I had with this in the very beginning with. And that is st still why I don't support the current legalization. I am for everybody smoking. I want everybody smoking. I want you to be able to grow it in your backyard, which right now you can't do. Yes, I correct. want you to be able to sell it. I want you to be able to make money and I want you to be able to prosper. And this current bill doesn't allow that. And that's why I was against it. And I support your right to entrepreneurship and your, your right to be able to provide for yourself and your family. Thank you. Thank you. But I can't support this law because it doesn't do that. Yeah, I mean, all it does is give it to the government and gives it to the bureaucrats, gives it to the elites that can afford all these crazy licensing schemes. Well, and that's the thing. So as soon as it does come official, they still going to change it within a year because they got to find out, you know, because I mean? some, some things they don't know about, they got to adjust. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> so we got Mike Rufo jumping in from the, first. from the business room, coming in dressed in a nice suit, very snappy. What do you it's got for us? Sport jacket. I'm sorry. What's your name, brother? It's, it's Cannabis Kurt. Cannabis Kurt. What's up, dude? What's going nice on, to meet man. you, man. Um, I will say that the one enemy of this bill is incrementalism because right now there's a lot of people throughout the state that think that the fight is over. Yes. They think that because somebody said it's legal, that means it's over and nothing else needs to be done. So anytime someone's going to attempt to make those changes in the next year, they're going to be like, why bother? It's already legal. Yeah. And I think that, you know, that's the one issue I take with a lot of incrementalism is the fact that it placates too many people to the point where you won't have the support necessary to, to make it a more aggressive legalization, if not decriminalization. Because let's be honest, decriminalization across the board is really what needs to happen. Yeah, I mean, so the, I, if you just want the cannabis law to be regulated because you want to just do it on a recreational side, then yes, decriminalization is perfectly fine. And I'm, I'm, I'm with decriminalization, I'm with recreational. But me, I'm on the business side when it comes to cannabis, you know, because we got people fighting, thousands of people fighting for the rec side. I'm fighting for the business side. So that's why I, I every day I'm up on the news articles and mm -hmm. I'm following, subscribing to places because I want to know everything that's going on so I can give this information to other people so right. that way we don't make stupid mistakes because just because you do, just because it's decriminalized doesn't mean a cop can't lock you up. You know what I mean? He can't lock you up for marijuana, but say if you say- Well, he'll find another reason. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You were, be, you were being unconscionable or you were, you know, you were- uh you drove over so the yellow line. You drove accident. over the yellow line the yeah. wrong way. They're, they're always going to come up so with another do, reason so to arrest you, but at least support, you won't get slammed with that. So let's support decriminalization and abolition of the police. Well, the other the other problem <laughs> sounds so, like sounds like a political so outside platform of the record, from the from the business aspect of it, the business aspect of it, the licensing scheme mm -hmm. is really what's going to prevent entry in a marketplace for most for most entrepreneurs. So right now, if you look and if you could talk to the NJ Weed Man about this, one of the, the largest actual market place in, in New Jersey is marijuana trade. Marijuana trade is one of the largest markets in New Jersey. If it's not the top, it's one of the top five markets in New Jersey. When you, if you just take all the money spent and how many people are actually participating in that market. Right now, what you're doing is you're taking just a, a special class of people that are allowed to participate in that market without penalty and without fine. And that's the, this, that's the problem I have. It's similar to say, to say even, you know, like a hair braiding license, right? Like I don't think those should exist either. And the idea that they monopolize the licensing process is the, the rule is, is the anybody that walks issue. in has to be the next one on. So <laughs> you guys are on the podcast now. Welcome. What's going on, guys? You guys yeah, are here. You can, you can take those off. Yeah. Uh, guys, I just want to thank I Kirk. He's he's days, got to run, but I, look, I always appreciate hanging out Definitely with you, brother. Man. Good to see you. All right, man. Y'all keep doing your thing. Man. Absolutely. Kirk, brother. no disrespect, oh. man. Keep fighting the fight, man. Oh, definitely. I'm always gonna keep fighting. The Absolutely, fight. man. We're I, in I your corner, by the way. Definitely. And um, you can follow me on YouTube at Cannabis Kirk. So you could go there and throw and up your 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 shop and your business and all that. Oh well, well I can't make sales past Sunday. Uh, that's uh, but, oh, oh, for right. But but I got things going on the website. Still check it out. It's vaporfog.com. That's with two G's. Again, check me out. I'm on YouTube. Take all care, man. All right, man. Y'all be safe. You. Of course, cannabis Kirk leaves and everybody else abandons me. See how that works. All right, man. So what else? I don't know what else you guys want to talk about, but uh, these these guys were supposed to be wrapped up by now. Want to wait? We're supposed to be eating some lunch. Yeah, you want to take a quick picture? Yeah, or give us uh, come come over here and do it so that I can still yell into the mic. We're just gonna take a quick picture and be right back in one second. Or how about I take? I'll send it to you. Oh shit! Wrong way. Awesome, right, man. man. I'll text you. Right. Good to see you, brother. Take care, dude. Right, man. Nice to meet you. Me too. All right, so are we done with this business end or what, Rufo? You want to post bro, up in here? Great, bro. 
I wanted to scare some of the some of the newcomers, tell them they have to jump on the mic when they come in. They were petrified. <laughs> I'll throw this one up here in case anybody changes their mind. So what uh, we got all the business end stuff done, right? Yeah, man. It, for the most part, I think we still got to elect candidates. We got to nominate candidates and everything, but that should go pretty quick. Everything's pretty much done already. The only thing that's going to happen is the gubernatorial, um, the gubernatorial vote, and the gubernatorial, uh, you know, nomination. So for those of you that don't know, what, what's up, man? Oh yeah, I, I did. I just responded just now. Yeah, man. He's he's gonna, and I know him. I'll follow up with him after. So Slappy Joe, that was him. He's like, yo, tell him my name's Kirk. I'm like, yeah, I just said yeah, it in Kirk the chat. With a K. Yeah, Kirk, K-I-R-K. He's a good dude, man. And uh, he make, has a ton of product. He has a huge selection. Um, it's just a shame that this legislation is going to put him under, basically, unless he goes and gets a storefront, which is what our government is always good for. So the, you all know Rufo. He's, he's been with us a ton up, of times. Good close friend of the uh, of the of the organization has run for Congress a bunch of times under the banner of this party. Um, what's some uh, any big takeaways that public should know about in terms of what the LP is doing this year? Uh, we're just you know arguing with ourselves like we always do. There's not, the thing we're best at is infighting. It's amazing. Yeah, um, there's a mic for you too, brother. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, nothing really. We, we we did just create a new board position, which is the VP of Political Affairs. Uh, I was fortunate enough to earn the vote and be. Be blessed with that title. Congratulations, and, and, man. And, and a bunch of shit ton of work to do. Uh, the idea here is uh, why? Wow, Rufo wearing a jacket and looks. That's almost, your boy, Mitch. Almost professional, Mitch. You got no idea how professional I am, brother. <laughs> Don't worry about it. He knows how to turn it on. Listen, I can do it when I got to do it. Um, essentially, we're working on policy. Uh, we're, we're looking to push policy, work with candidates. It, it, it gives. It's a position that the party is direly needed for a very long time. Uh, it's not enough to to nominate people to run for office or to get petitions on on for 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 um for ballot access. We need to actually have an impact legislatively, and to have that impact legislatively, we need a group of people that are solely focused on 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 going to board on going to council meetings on going to county uh seat meet commissioner meetings now that commissioner now right yeah uh, commission commissioner meetings going to state house going to the state house and petitioning the assemblymen and, and the senators and that's that's what this position is going to be and that's my job is to rally anybody who wants to do that so if you're looking to, to to reduce the size of government in new jersey and you're looking to have a loud voice with you who is going to drag the overton window to the side of freedom and away from socialism by all means hit us up uh, hit me up. You can hit me up through the Blue Star Union. You can hit me up through the through the NJLP.org. My, there'll be an email on the website to find me at. Uh, we're looking for volunteers to help. The first thing we're working on is to defend the Guard Act. I'm going to get that noticed. We're going to get that recognized. There should be a web page up on the website probably in the next week and a half explaining the Defend the Guard Act. Um, it's just an attempt on the state level to force, to con force Congress to actually declare war, which we haven't done in over 70 years. Yeah, and look, Rufo is – one of the most active uh, political minds in this group, man. I, I met him like three or four years ago when I myself tried to run for a local position. And at that time I was under the banner of the LP. And I, I remember distinctly telling him that he was like the only one of the only people I remembered from the meeting because he was so effusive, so friendly, outgoing, just a great dude. And, and he's been Appreciate awesome, that. awesome helping us out with Blue Star Union videos with our book clubs. Um, I think we're going to try to do some more like non book club meetings as yeah, you were saying I think we should i think we should get the book club crew together more often because we do have so much damn fun and it is actually good video listen um, th there's some really smart people in the state man there really there are really and we need to bring those people out and get them involved and that's it man we need, just need to highlight the fact that there's intelligent people who believe in liberty in new jersey so if you're one of those people and you want to get more involved by all means please start showing up to some events get involved come on when we're doing book club you know drop your comments in there argue with mitch all you want you know i <laughs> love you mitch i can't i can't wait for mitch <laughs> mitch we got it, it, COVID really is ruined it's it, what an inopportune year to start this organization when everyone's worried about this stupid virus but I would love to get Mitch out to some of the events. He would be a riot. He's really, really fun. Uh oh, uh oh. We have uh, Antifa Amy. Antifa Amy. <laughs> are you? Are you? Are you jumping on Mike? No, it's not because it's fun. I'm watching. You're watching. Your live audience. This the is live a live audience, audience, but you, they can't see you though. That's fine. They don't, the, the online audience. What if I just strategically place a surreptitious microphone right there? Is it that? It would be like ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear. Crunching and slurping Not for in the free. background. That's on locals. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, five dollars a month. <laughs> we'll give you a discount for a yearly locals. membership. Com. Yeah. So I, 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 this is the first time I'm meeting Amy. Last night we had a little social hour here uh, with some people. No official agenda. Hanging out, having some food, having some drinks, throwing bocce balls around, and they, they had a the inside. 
they had a little live stream going on and somebody dragged me into a room and Amy was really funny making cracking jokes. A couple of people that were uh, fun to talk to. So it was nice to uh, meet some new faces here. Amy's the, the party. new secretary for the NJLP. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good for you. So now she's got a powerful vote in what happens with the party. I mean, I've always had a powerful vote. Absolutely. No. So Slappy Joe just said one of the most libertarian things I've ever seen. You don't want me at your events. I'll get drunk and show my ass, dude. It's really not that much different We've than had the like last four night. People do that already. Yeah. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was there was a, a Janet Jackson moment uh, early on, and then uh, a lot wardrobe of mal wardrobe malfunction. A lot of now legal illicit plot products made their way into the room. So it was it was a good time, man. Um, so do we have a nominee yet? Uh, that's gonna. We had to defer that to after lunch. So we're gonna have uh, to have a short, short lunch, and we're gonna have to start working on that probably in the next 10, 15 minutes. We gotta, we gotta drag one of these people here. I wanna, I wanna talk to some of these people and get them oh, on a microphone. Dan. Can you grab grab Kraus? Do me a favor. Grab the person that would be the least comfortable on a microphone and a camera. Don't, oh. Please don't do that. No. <laughs> I love you, Mark, but come on. I know you don't want to be here. I'm protecting is, is you. Dan, is Dan Kraus gonna Dan come Krause. talk to us? Ladies and gentlemen, it's the chair of the New yeah, Jersey Libertarian Party. Come over here so you can come get on, here. so you can get in the shot, and you can kind of lean forward right here. Right, they can see your, be shot now? your beautiful mug. Right, Look at guys, that. Guys, how are you? Now, some of you may remember well, we had uh, a nice uh, debate here between the two candidates, and Dan Krause is oh, the state chair VP. of the New Jersey LP. Yeah. NPR. Another celebrity. Our VP. Another celebrity. Here we go. Hey guys. I might have to move this camera I so we catch everyone. I just want to say that the uh, we're at a, a slight break. For lunch, you know, we're getting some food in us, and then we got to come back and elect a whole we gubernatorial talking. board, and then we got speakers starting at two o'clock. So it's going to be rapid fire from here on out. It's yeah. going to be fun. Is there any chance we can maybe expedite lunch and get people to start working while we're eating? Well, uh, it's I said no later than one twenty-five. Um, as soon as okay, I see, okay, we did that already. As soon as I see everyone that's got some food in their hands, we're going to get back to business. But North Fantastic. hasn't gotten their food yet. Yeah, that's why I'm waiting. Okay, on North. <laughs> Always have North go. Do we have any new reps to the board or we anything? We do. Someone by the name of Matthew Struck. Hey, we're familiar with Matthew. <laughs> Struck. Where's that? Nice. Class? This is his empty chair right behind me. So while he's uh, he's just become a board member in the NJLP. That is phenomenal. Lots of I, lots I of big go developments. Back to it. Keep up the good work on the podcast. Hey, everybody out there, thank you so much for watching. Good to see you, Dan. Thank you. No, oh, you're on. You're not. Well, you're the not other camera's on. got getting you from here. No, she's you like can't see it. It's she's trying to see if I'm bear. serious or not. Uh, what? No, I'll come around. I'll come around. You come around. You want to sit back here? Enjoy the gymnastics. Try not to hit the wires. Keep Matt's seat warm for him. I think I'm. Let's be, oh, I see what the cameras are. Yeah, yeah. It's the camera's right there. It's just that this is the platform doing all the streaming. All right. So tell me about yourself. Uh, Mike Guadagnino. I'm the vice. President of marketing and now it's public relations. I run all the social media with some help from Amy and Dan, as well as uh, do a lot of the uh, press releases. And I mean, the contact from outsiders who want to come in questions about the party, about a statement we need to make. And I'm the I'm I'm that guy. So tell tell me about your. I got asked this recently. Now I think it's fun to ask other people. Tell me about your your political conscience, your political journey. Were you always of this persuasion, if you will? How did you arrive at thinking this way politically? That's a great question. Um, as a younger child, I was more of a Democrat. I saw the Jimmy Carter years as a giant failure. I joined the, the Reagan brigade for a yeah. while there. And um, I still feel that a lot of his rhetoric was very good. He didn't, he, didn't camp, he didn't legislate a lot like his rhetoric. But as time went on, I, I became more and more... Uh, I saw, found people like, um, like, like like Harry Brown mm -hmm. and uh, Ron Paul, and it just really took me more and more. And especially when the 2000s came in, I saw how the Republican Party became more that neocon, uh, tax and uh, not, maybe not tax and spend, borrow and spend. And I really joined more and more to the Libertarian Party, where um, it's a trans it's a transition, it's a transformation. You have to kind of learn a lot about the party, and you just realize when you realize what the NAP means. And what liberty means, it's if it just just takes over. And that that's where you that's where you become. So how have you been participating politically with them in the last couple of years, leading up to this position that you have now? Well, I'll tell you what I do. I'm I, on a little, on a little side on here. I, I am a, an appointed. I, I run the rec commission in my town, and um, when I came on about ten years ago, and it's Oakland, New Jersey. When I came on, I transitioned everything so that there be no taxpayer dollars to pay for anything involving parks, recreation. And uh, anything along those lines, Elks, and we, we used to, the town taxpayers used to pay thousands and thousands of dollars to, for these things. We've 
we've actually transitioned it. We're, we run everything in the black now where um, it's all done by, um, by uh, membership fees or, or they're just basically fees to use things. And, and we've, we're have we building like a million dollar park and we haven't taken one dollar of taxpayer taxpayer monies. So I've, well, I'm not an elected position and I haven't run for elected position. Uh, from an appointed position, I'm, I'm, I've actually helped to kind of transition a lot of thought, a lot of how things are done off the taxpayer dollar and, and on to, um, you know, those willing, those wanting to participate can participate and if there's a fee and otherwise um, they don't have to. So on this, on this, in this position rather, uh, are you on a board with other people or is it just you yourself? I'm a board, there's a board of nine members. So I've been the chairman for about 10 years. So tell me what's been the most anti-government solution that you've accomplished in that role that you think would be unconventional for someone typically in that position. Yeah, you're welcome. One is I don't have to follow the rhetoric of, of the of the borough of, of the town. Right. That, that, that's one. Second thing is really it's just cause we don't want taxpayer dollars. We do not want your taxpayer money. We'll take care of it ourselves. We'll, we'll handle these things ourselves. Gotcha. Is 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 the town uh, generally like a Republican town? Very much so. Yeah. I mean, I've been to Oakland before a couple of times, but I'm not too familiar it, with the political makeup. It's very much a Republican makeup. town, but as right now a lot of people are transitioning from New York City into Bergen County. Right. It's becoming a more of a blue town, and we're trying to reach out to, and I, I've done some things on, on our social media, basically reaching out to people from New York City who are moving to Jersey. It's the same, you know, you left this, this state, you left this city because it was Democrat. You didn't like it. You obviously can't vote for Republican because it's not part of your, your DNA. Look at us. I mean, we, we, we fit in with, with, with a lot of what you believe in, and uh, it's a different way of getting things done. So is, is that, would you say that's the party's biggest opportunity is the left? Is that where you think the most inroads can be made to grow the party? I, do, I, I really do. Yes, I absolutely do. I think um, right and left, it is very, there's, there's very little difference between the two of them. And um, people who really do see things about... Uh, such as the uh, what, what corporations or, or corporate welfare, if they're against that, or in civil liberties and 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 the constitution. I mean, we're the party. We're the, we're the party to come to. You know, there, there is another option. We just have to reach out and let people see that we can we can lead. We, we can be that the, that party. So, how do you respond to someone who says, you know, okay, maybe you align a little bit more with what I think, or who you know, the speaker, the fictional question. Sure. Maybe you align something. You align a little bit more with what I think, but it's a waste of my time to vote for you because there's no chance that you win. What do you say to the person that makes that criticism and goes and votes for a, one of the major two parties? Well, the major two parties. I guess if you're talking a state level wise, um, there is no Republican Party in the state of New Jersey, and so if you want to help build something differently, the Libertarian Party. Just take a look at us, and then let's see. Is, is it going to happen in one cycle? Probably not. But it starts to create a couple more cycles and then some more energy. You'll see that. And, you know, we may, the issues I see it, we haven't been able to raise the, the money and the funds. When I was helping uh, Peter Roman run four years ago for governor, we ran into um, Patrick Murray, who's, who's one of the top pollsters. And we asked him, point blank, we asked him, we saw him at Channel 12, uh, Channel 12 Studios, why do you not include us in your polls? And all he wanted to know was, how much money have you raised? Right. And we try to explain to them that you know we're not we don't have a handout for the corporations looking for corporate money. You know? So we're not gonna get that those millions of dollars from from the big farm, for, especially not from the military industrial complex. Right. So um you know, we're, we're more grassroots and we're, we're trying to build and I've seen it in the NJLP a large you know, a lot of a lot of movement, a lot of growth the past few years, and hopefully as this continues and to answer that person's question, join us. Let's help build this together and let's help change these things that are going on. So your vote is never wasted. Yeah, pharmaceuticals is probably probably the number one corporate industry in New Jersey in terms of influence or uh, outside of, say, like unions and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Would you say that's the biggest influence point? Yeah, I definitely would agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Do you uh, think that it's a better use of, of time of the party to focus on the large races or winning in local seats? I think they should always be someone on the top, but I think we should really work more locally, you know, just uh, work locally and, and let's continue. But, but if you have someone on the top for optics, people could see from top to bottom, you, you have a ticket. So I, what, what does, what does, uh, how's it going, man? The rule is anyone that's new has to come jump right onto the live stream right away. I'm just joking, man. You can go on in. Uh, Dude, this you guys are supposed to be uh, ruggedly independent, right? Yeah. There we. Oh, well, we were we did a broadcast from there. Oh, yeah. yeah, man. He's got a he's got a Belmar. Uh, he's got the Attilus Jim shirt on. Actually, so, oh, that's what Rufo was wearing here last night. 
Um, okay, so back to what we were saying. Okay, so races, all that good stuff. Yeah, I had a question on that. What was it? Oh, yeah. So in the in the local races, let's put it this way. Uh, there's sort of perverse – this is not my opinion. There's a, like a culturally perverse – uh predilection to where people focus on the top right so if you have like soccer moms taking their kids to a practice and they're like oh did you see what obama said trump is racist and what did what did uh, what did this pre presidential hopeful say it's always they're always looking at federal things they're always looking at the top uh and i think that's kind of the biggest obstacle is if you ask somebody who's your senator they may be able to tell you if you ask someone can you name three of your councilmen most of the time they can't tell you they don't care they don't know mm -hmm. How do you get, I agree with you that local is important. How do you get people interested in the local level? And then how do you pull voters away who don't know any of those names on the ballot and they just go R down the down the down the ballot and or D down the ballot? How do we flip that convention? It's campaigning. It's also getting people who are involved in their towns. I mean, if someone is libertarian idea, somebody has ideas, do something in your town, whether it be helping with your the public your town carnival or or, or coaching or something, just get your name out there and, and, and let people know who you are. Show that you do do something. You have a little bit of resume behind you. Say, all right, I've done this. I've done that. You know, people say they know you and then just go door to door, knocking on door to door. So what you so with marketing, what, what can we see coming down the pike for the party in the state? The market. Well, but basically we're trying to, you know, within the past year, we have a, we've had a big tick up in uh, the amount of press releases we, we put out there. Uh, we should keep up with that. We're building, we're growing our social media. Social media is always changing. It's diverse. We're continuing to, to, to build with that. We had a real good, um, if anybody's on Twitter, a real good uh, fun debate going on with the Kentucky uh, Libertarian Party. Yeah, I saw that. And just going back and forth, that just actually we had people contact us. How do I join? It, it just so just coming up with more creative ideas like that, trying to reach more people, going to where people are, and you know, try to make a difference. Yeah, Twitter is the it's the more open of the social networks where I think someone who like uh, who doesn't have a lot of reach can say something and it can have a big impact. Whereas yeah. some of the other socials almost require that you already have a following for what you post to have reach, if you will. I kind of like that. And then you can get exposed to new people really quickly. And there's obviously all these little circles like these like uh, uh, echo chambers. And if you can penetrate one with a message, now you're just exposed to this, you know, this large audience that you didn't have access to before. So I think Twitter is probably the most effective of the social networks in terms of spreading messages. I definitely agree. That's how the algorithm definitely helps. Yeah, definitely works. And especially if someone retweets you, you know, if someone if someone as popular as, as Mike Rufo uh, retweets you, you your goals it gets that, everybody. Is that the case? So that's the key to success. I'm not really very popular. Jump, jump over here, man, or the, so the camera can see that. Uh, that coat. I'm a nobody with a nice beard. <laughs> My retweets mean nothing. Rufo did a, a couple of congressional runs. He's done his hard time running large statewide races he's a chiseled veteran in that space it's brutal it's hard it's not easy focus local run for local office run for your board of ed run for your town council that's where you can have the real effect run for your board of ed and get up there and say let's abolish ourselves yeah. exactly <laughs> <laughs> so we need to get rid Actually, of apply that to every other position <laughs> you, you know and that's true because if you look at the board of ed some of these board of ed elections and have 400 people voting them yes I mean, if you can get 66 percent of your property tax goes to the board of education folks so if you want to have a say in what happens with property tax, you should be running for your board of education. Yeah, I never understand like the Republican supposed fiscal hawks who go, they kind of like discount education. They're like, well, that's just the thing that's here. It's that behemoth that we can't do anything about. Now, let's go argue. What's that? Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what he's saying. Uh, he's been talking a lot today. So uh, why why is it that Republicans like discount this entire like enormous portion of the budget and they just assume like other oh, tests to be there? This discussion about reforming schools, why do you think Good to get you. take care? Why do you think it's so hard to get traction talking about reforming education? Um well which is like he said, you know, seventy to sixty five percent of your budget. They're basically like the same way when it comes to military, the same when it comes to police, the same way it comes to so it's, they have their their that's I guess that's the neocon defined. Yeah. That they want big big business. Um, is Craig speaking yet? Not yet. I gotta get out there when he. Uh, yeah, he should be in a minute. They just finished um the speech for uh, James, so I think. Uh, I actually I should really should get out there. We just got shushed, so I think we'll uh maybe we'll end this for now. If we, if we have time and we have a moment of peace, we'll we'll start another stream. But uh, hey, thanks for your time, hey, man. Good you, to meet man. you. This is, this is fun. Absolutely. Thank take you. care, guys. If we get some time, we'll start another stream a little bit later. But for now, take care, everybody.